Ready. Ready? Stand by. Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're gonna be talking about a competition that I just shot last weekend and uh, kind of my setup for it, uh, everything that was going on at the competition, how well that I did, how well did my setup go, and all of that type of stuff. This is a competition that I did shoot last year and did okay. My first day, I really struggled. Second day, I did a lot better. And uh, this year, I came walking into the competition knowing exactly what to expect. And uh, I, I, did, I did well, I did. In fact, I did better than any other competition that I've ever been in. So <laughs> we'll get into that in this video. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I would really appreciate you guys considering do so. Uh, commenting, thumbs up, likes, shares, all that type of stuff. Every type of interaction that you can do with it is greatly appreciated and the best way to support this channel. With that being said, let's get into it. Last year, I did run the SAM 5 with the Primary Arms 3X Prism optic on this. This is a fixed powered 3X uh, optic. So that means that I ran the magnified division, which was a really stacked division. This rifle ran fairly well. I had one hiccup uh, that I needed to correct. They allowed me to reshoot that stage, which was nice. But um, at the end of the day, this did run very, very well. And I got a first round hit at 600 yards with this setup, which I was pleasantly surprised with. I've never shot that far uh, with a 5.56 uh, rifle before and uh, yeah, it, it did it did very, very well. The problem that I ran into was that when shooting kind of quote unquote CQB style stages, uh, the magnification that I had on this optic was too much for me to really get in and shoot quick. So uh, unfortunately that really hindered my performance, but um, I figured it out and ran Sunday at the competition last year a lot better. So there was the setup that I had for last year and I was wondering what should I run for this year? So I reached out to a couple of my friends, um, the Combat Accountant, Bolts and Holes, and of course Clayco. Uh, those are the three guys that I really look up to when it comes to uh, competition shooting, especially with AKs, those guys are just awesome. I mean, one of the three, if not all three, are typically going to podium at Kalashnikov, and uh, sure enough, this year, all three of them did as well. So we're gonna start out with first place irons. Well, yeah. Second place, Optics Magnified, Dr. Neil Vermillion! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Second place, well, So, I wanted to not only squad with them, because to be the best, you need to shoot with the best, but also pick their brain on what should I do for my setup. They gave me some great advice because I was very worried that the one day that I was going to be able to shoot Kalashnikov, which is the Saturday, was going to be the 600 yard target. Um, and I was like, should I run my SAM 5? Should I just run a red dot? 
And their advice, all three of them said the exact same thing, run the rifle that is going to make you the most competitive across all stages. Don't worry about the long range, you're going to figure that out. Run everything uh, as best as you possibly can with the rifle that's going to make you the most competitive. So, because of that, I did run the Trash Panda. <laughs> you guys know that I've ran this at uh, Kalash Bash and placed in the top 75, uh, 72 to be exact. So, that was really, really nice. And um, I have thought that this was going to be a really good setup. I did make one change. We'll talk about that here in just a second. But to be honest with you, the Siley Bull X Pro that I have on this Atero Arms mount worked out very, very well. I'm going to dive into uh, the specifics on how I was able to figure out long distance stuff just using a red dot uh, in this video as well. But this setup did very, very well. I did change out the sleeve for the adjustable gas block. Uh, the stock factory sleeve that goes in here to allow you to adjust the gas is a three position. And I was able to find a five position through the AK files and uh, swap that out. Ran it on position one because I was running XM193 ammo. And I knew that that pretty much full powered 5.56 ammo was going to give me a lot of pressures. So swap that out, put it on position one and it ran great. I did have two failures to extract. Uh, one was at the very end of the match or the stage rather, and that didn't cause any issues. But I also had one in the middle of the stage. It was easy to correct. Both of those instances came from using my specialty ammo, which was the AAC 556 77 grain OTMs. Uh, that round performed very, very well with the exception of those two hiccups. So uh, really didn't affect my placing. Uh, and with that being said, I did place in uh, the top 15 overall. I was 11th, which was pretty awesome. Uh, and then here at the end of the video, I'll show you where I placed in my division of non-magnified. So let's get into it. Uh, here's the first stage. As you can see, I had to climb a wall. Uh, I ran past the first shooting uh, position and then uh, yep, yep, yep. finished it out. Uh, it's too many mistakes. It, I was the very first guy to start that stage on our first stage of the day. That was Bay 2 or Stage 2. And uh, so made some mistakes, but uh, still competitive. Obviously, you guys, you know, obviously, the guys that I was squatted with, like Clay, Neil, um, Adam. <laughs> Soli and um, Keel from Bolts and Holes. Uh, those guys, they were running it in like 120 or less. And um, I think the slowest of them was like 123. I ran it in 143. So, I mean, I'm just like, oh, this is going to be a long day. <laughs> Is that all of them? Is it all five? Yeah. 
The next stage uh, was one that uh, you had to ground your magazines and any time that you had to reload, you had to go back to the starting position and pick up a new magazine, dropping off your old one because you could only have one magazine at a time. That adds a little bit of a physical element to it and uh, keeps your brain engaged in it. And so here's how that turned out. At the beginning of the stage, I thought I had a magazine Thanks. issue, but no, it was me just trying to charge it with the safety on like a freaking rookie. <laughs> really bad mistake, kind of get into your own head. And uh, yeah, just did the best I could to finish out the stage. Targets four and five, as you're looking at them, moving left to right, I could not see. I was too short uh, to be able to see them. And I was like literally shooting through the grass Four, I was able to hit each time. Five, um, I struggled on, but just skipped them, took the penalty on that, and then moved up to the final shooting positions. And unfortunately, I timed out on it. So I had four failures to either neutralize or engage, which are 30 seconds a piece. So 120 seconds um, to pretty much start off the stage, I, I guess, you know? So that was pretty tough. But at the end of the day, um, I was able to make it up in other stages. Thank you. That time? That time. Sorry, I said move instead of hit. It's okay. It's okay. You got it? Yep. Three. Did you skip one? I did. Okay. You skipped one at both places, right? Correct. And then two here. So <laughs> Mark, you shouldn't be so honest. Nope. Moving on to our third stage of the day before we broke for lunch. That was the long range stage. And let me tell you, um, I crushed that stage. Struggled with one target, um, but overall, uh, I was uh, one shot one hit on every other uh, target that we had. Started off with six silhouettes targets starting at 70 yards and moving out to, uh, I think it was like 250 to 300 yards. And then after that, we had a gong at like 450 yards, somewhere in there. And then the last target was at approximately 600 yards. Some people were saying it was like 575, but just for, um, you know, a nice round number. We were calling it 600 yards. Uh, ended up doing very well. Like I said, the last silhouette target I really struggled with and uh, finally was able to get it after I calmed down a little bit. Uh, first round impact at uh, 450 yards and then 600 yards first round impact as well. Running it in 44.37 seconds. That put me seventh fastest on the long range stage and second fastest 
on non-magnified. So that was really, really super cool. Uh, I didn't think that I was going to do so well, but uh, it just all aligned. And as you can see at the very end of the video uh, that uh, I ended up having a uh, double feed with that AAC ammo. We'll see it again here uh, in a couple more stages, but uh, ultimately did very well. That double feed didn't, uh, or failure to extract, didn't um, affect my time, which was good. <laughs> wow. I'm worried about shooting long range with the red dot. No, hold on though. He had a stuck case on the last shot when he hit the gong. Yeah, the 600, yeah, the 600 yard target, I had a... The gun a went down after that shot, but he happened to finish it. Um, and what I wanted to do real quick was talk about how I was able to understand my holdovers. This red dot has a circle dot, and uh, what I came to find out is the circle is 26 MOA, the dot is two MOA. So if you were to bisect the circle, I know that I have from the dot to the bottom of the circle that that is 13 MOA. All I did was zero this at 50 yards, took the data from the round that I was using, the AAC 556-77 grain OTMs, knew that it was 2,700, approximately 2,700 feet per second, figured out the G1 and understood what my drops were at various ranges. Um, at 600 yards, my drop was going to be about 16 MOA, so that I knew that I needed to take the bottom of the stem of the, um, you know, north, south, east, west lines on the circle, very much what like Hollow Sun does with their circles. If I put the bottom of that stem on 600 yards, that should be approximately 16 MOA, and then um, I should be able to get a hit. Some of the other ranges that were kind of odd, I just put the red dot directly in the center of the, of the target or just, just a touch high. And then for the 450 yard target, um, that was like seven MOA drop. So I just bisected the dot and the circle right into the center of that target and got a first round hit. So understanding your red dot or the optic that you're using, understanding uh, the bullet drops at different ranges, and then calculating that to understand where you should hold with your red dot was a huge help on this. And I really did like having the feature for the very first time, I never really even thought of it, but the feature of having that circle dot really did help out for this uh, for this stage. All right, moving on from there was the uh, <laughs> the shield stage, I guess. I don't remember what the names of them are, but uh, essentially you had to hold a shield and put your rifle or pistol into the notch of the shield, and you had to shoot from that notch. You start off with your rifle, you go through, you neutralize all of the hostile targets, and then you drop off your rifle, come back to the beginning of the stage. They have four ammo cans. You choose an ammo can, pop it open, look at the um, brick that they have in there. We, as a group, as a squad, read everything out loud and uh, then you have to go in and do exactly what the brick said. That uh, could be confusing because hostile and hostages are very similar. All so um, gets two C zone. you gotta keep that straight in your head. And when you're shooting, you have to have your arm engaged, your shooting hand engaged, or the pistol engaged into the shield as well. If you don't, that's a procedural, that's 30 seconds. So um, I did fairly well. Uh, ended up at like 97 seconds for that squat or for that stage. And um, I was very happy with that. Uh, ran it clean, which was good. Uh, could have ran a little bit faster, uh, just being confident with my, uh, with my rifle and it's zero. But at the end of the day, uh, challenging to say the least uh, and a lot of fun. Drop 
hammer. 67. Leave that here and we'll clear the rifle real quick. Okay. <clears throat> Our second to last stage was uh, run through the jungle. This is one of the stages that I really like. Uh, it's nerve wracking to say the least, but it is a blind stage. You get your stage brief. They tell you, okay, from the first starting position, you should expect four targets. From the second starting or second shooting position, you will shoot the same four targets. And then from the last shooting position, you will have another four targets. You have to engage each one of those targets uh, two times with one of the targets getting four rounds. So 10 rounds per shooting position with the last stage or last shooting position only receiving two shots per target. So you have to keep all of that in your head. Uh, you have to then find the targets shooting through trees and uh, you know brush and everything else. Very nerve wracking, but uh, was able to figure it out. The last four targets you can't even see in my um, GoPro. Uh, they're anywhere between two to 300 yards, uh, unknown distance. So you have to figure out your dope on that as well and make sure that you're shooting correctly. For me, for some reason, I think maybe because we were shooting downhill just a little bit, I had to put my red dot at the base of the target to get impacts, but uh, I was again running that 77 grain OTMs. Uh, so I, I don't know, I, I don't get why the dope changed, but um, my zero is still on, so who knows. Uh, ran that in 99.99 seconds uh, and was one of the top fastest, not the fastest, but one of the fastest in the squad. So that was pretty cool. Left. And then finally, the last stage and where I found the Achilles heel for this red dot um, came up. And I also had a failure to extract right in the middle of it as well. This stage, you start off with two ammo cans weighing 50 pounds each. You have to run approximately 60 yards, drop them off in a circle, come back and then shoot five targets two times each. Uh, at about 97 yards. So you, again, need to understand your dope on your red dot if you're shooting non-magnified. And uh, where I found the issue was my red dot was, well, I was looking into the sun as I was shooting those five targets and my red dot uh, was absorbing or reflecting all of that sunlight as we're looking into the afternoon sun causing me to have a bit of a burst, a uh, starburst, sunburst on my red dot. Basically, I had my red dot, and then I had a dot above, below, and on either side. So I was looking at five different dots trying to work my way through. <laughs> it was, it was nerve-wracking, to say the least. But I was able to shoot it clean, go run and pick up your uh, two ammo cans, bring them back, and then start your pistol stage uh, with a crazy uh, Texas star. Uh, it not only did it spin, but it yawed back and forth. You had some poppers that you had to hit as well. So uh, that stage was extremely nerve wracking, but I was able to run that clean as well. Uh, a little slower than I wanted, but you know, it is what it is. I've never shot a Texas star like that. So again, it uh, boils down to the uh, complexity of Kalashnikov and why I like it so much.
with all of that being said, um, I was very happy with how I ran it. Uh, I did the best I could. Uh, ended up coming in 11th overall, which was um, a huge surprise. But uh, here's how I ended up. <laughs> Do you have this one? <laughs> Mark Grimsley, fourth place. Marky Mark! Yeah! Dude, he got 44 seconds on long range. <laughs> So there you have it coming in fourth in non magnified, which uh, that that's the highest that I've ever placed in any competition shooting competition ever. You know, um, I think the only time that I've ever podiumed on anything else is when I pole vaulted in high school, you know, so uh, outside of that, uh, I'm, it just really energized me to get even better. Um, this weekend, I'm shooting a two gun match. I just shot it yesterday as you're watching this video. So we'll see how well I did there. I'm going to again run the uh, M90. And uh, I'm going to bring a secondary rifle and I'm going to run two different, uh, two different rifles at this uh, competition because I really want to get the Prodigy up over the thousand round mark. So there you have it. There is Kalashnikon, a great, great competition. Uh, if you have the ability to get in on that competition, next year please do so uh, there are limited number of spots and once they fill those up that's it they only take a certain number of shooters each and every single year so i'd encourage you guys to check that out with all of that being said we're going to go ahead and get out of here um, i want to say a special thank you to matt and the team with kalashnikon uh, putting on a stellar event um, it is a shooting competition first you know and then they have some uh, booths from people like um, the AK guys and uh, Aim Surplus. Those two uh, companies were there, which was cool to see them and meet them. But um, yeah, man, uh, you guys have to check it out. And thanks again to Matt and the team for putting it on. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you so much. We will catch you guys next time. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Bye, y'all.